students. In this video I'm going to construct a histogram from a frequency distribution that I constructed in a previous video. So if you need to know how to get to this point then you can go back and refer to a previous video on um, constructing a frequency distribution. Okay, so we have raw data here in column A um, and the temptation is to say okay Excel's pretty smart let me just highlight this data and a histogram is a bar graph, so let's just insert a bar graph. Big problem here, okay, this is not a histogram. Um, a histogram is from grouped data, and this is not grouped. Excel does not know how you want to group your data, so you've got to give it a little bit more information is that, than that. Um, what this is, is all it's done is created a column for each data value. See how it's increasing? This is because I've got my data sorted. Okay, um, and so all it's done is data point number one is 10, data no point number two is 13, and the height is 13. So this is wrong, incorrect, got to group our data before we can start the histogram. And so I've got my data grouped in a frequency distribution, um, and a histogram is a bar graph of the frequencies. So I'm going to highlight the frequencies, now insert that bar graph. So there's the start of our histogram, and it definitely is in grouped. So this first class, okay, so we, ha we do need to change these to where they're labeled correctly, but right now it's the first class has a frequency of 4, so the height of my bar is 4. So this is, is looking correct, but it, it needs some work. Um, let's start with the chart title. I'm just going to title this um, miles per gallon, because that's what got my variable name as. Okay, and then let's add the labels on the, um, the axes. To do that, when you click on your chart, you have these tabs pop up, the chart to design and the format. If I click off of it, they go away, but if you click on it, they pop up. And under chart design, you're going to add chart element and you want axe titles. Okay, we're gonna highlight. We're gonna label our our horizontal axis. This is our variable name as well. So this is the miles per gallon. Okay, and then we'll also label our um, sorry. Then we'll also label our vertical axis, and it is our frequency. So in a histogram, your um, horizontal axis is always your variable name, and then your vertical axis is your frequency. Okay. Now we want to change these labels. They're just labeled with the, you know, class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. We want to label it with our class limits. Okay. Um, a histogram technically is labeled using our boundaries, so like the beginning of this bar should be labeled with a 9.5 and the end of the bar should be labeled with a 16.5 and then we start our second bar at 16.5 and we end at 23.5. I wish that Excel would do this for us but it doesn't. It just will label um, in the center of the bar so the way I think the the best way to do this is to label each bar with your your class limit. So I have these class limits kind of I've got them separated here, but I just typed them out here so that I could use them to label my my bars. Okay. So to label these the way I want to, you're going to right click on your horizontal axis and do select data. And this allows you to select the data that your graph is is doing and what we want to, you know, our y values of course is our our frequency. You've got that highlighted there. What we want to change is our horizontal axis labels. So I'm going to click right here and it's going to let me, I could either type it in or I could easier highlight um, where those labels are in my um, graph. So I'm going to in my Excel document. So I'm going to highlight, I want these to be my horizontal axis labels. These cells corresponding to these frequencies. Hit OK and there they pop in. Okay. And then the last thing we need to do is histograms the bars touch and you can see right here that they don't. They've got gaps in between. The way to fix that is to click on your bars, okay, just, a, just a regular click, 
and up here it's going to pop up where you can change your um, gap width and we want a gap width of zero because we don't want any space between our bars. Okay, so there's a histogram and of course you can come up here and format it, make it prettier if you would like. Just make sure that when you change the formatting that you also make sure a lot of times it puts gaps back in that bar um, and you want to make sure that those um, of course stay there. So going back to the gap width of, of zero for that. Okay, so there's your histogram.